Come here. Might be yeah. some some of the sediment down in the bottom there. Oh yes. Nice. That core looked pretty full too. Mm-hmm. For considering. Well, I hadn't screwed it up at the end there. Yeah, but still. That well, was luckily full. you get to do two more, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I have, a, I have a thought. What if you uh, pushed them in and then rotated around a bit? Would you have enough reach to pull them out when it's off to the side? Or do you not have a good enough Core way where? to do that? Off to the side? Huh? Well, what if you pushed them in out in front of the, the vehicle? Well, I can do them to the side if you want. Yeah, I guess I don't care where they are. I just a shorter distance to the to the holster might be... Yeah, well, I, I accidentally let go of the grip. That's why it... Oh, okay. Well, do it however you want. Up, we'll, let's just get a couple I don't more. know if I could do it on the side here, actually, because... Might not be able to get down from uh, it. I can't see that great, but... Yeah. All right, we, well, do it, do it normal. Another core there. The, the, the looks like the current's just spinning us there. That's uh, four wraps into 0.68. What? Yeah. Who's spinning? Oh, our, uh, Atlanta. Just... She's... Oh, because you don't have... I only have one thruster. So you're not able to turn it? I'm trying my best uh, here and also. Take it out of auto head and just give it um, yaw. Just give it full beans on the yaw to make it turn. So we want more cores? Two more. Yeah, two more. So how will these uh, core samples uh, be processed? So probably, it, uh, well, at least one of them will be sieved. Mm -hmm. And any little critters that are living inside will be preserved in ethanol. Uh, another one will be sieved and uh, the course fraction will be retained to look for fish teeth and maybe one of them will be saved uh, in order to so just archive. <coughs> awesome. Yeah. We could try it your way. Well, uh, you know, I don't want to throw something too new into the protocol here. It seemed like it was useful to have it out front in order to really push it in, so. Whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, I don't have the beans here to, to get out of this. It's not doing it? No. So it stalls out? It stalls out, yeah. It's stalling out because of the tether. Could be the tether, yeah. You can come down some more. Sorry, yeah, we need to sort out this no worries, wraps thing. Yep. 
So the other thruster's not working at all? No, you went to, it was a Like it doesn't point. turn or it's just shorted? It's, it's grounded. Just shorted, it's, it's uh, isolated. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't work? You hand over, yeah. Hard ground fault. Well, hard isolated. ground fault, but does it work? I can kick her on. Yeah, uh, quit pushing it to go to zero. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Should have been zeroed before you kick that on. That's not. Right. They don't like that. Zero. Yeah, you'd already turned it on. So. On again. Place that button. We are now collecting our second um, core sample. Does it turn any better? Yeah, it's turning. We're coming out of it slowly. All right. Ship's not helping here. Yeah. We can move it closer if you want. Yeah. Roger. Bridge nav. I mean, it's mostly just the heave of the ship's messing me up. Let's do a two zero meter step bearing two nine zero.
That's what started. Come on, index, you pig. button is very frustrating. Thank you for your questions. Our pilots will answer them um, real soon. Um, for oh, so, what are we looking for in a core sample? Is there anything specific or? Yeah. So, the the organisms that live in the sediment, like worms and other things, um, <laughs> are called. You get the rapture. Yeah, it wraps her out. And, but, um, uh, okay, so we're going to turn that thruster back off, go so to auto head. Some, some of our scientists ashore. If you could get me back in view there. Are looking for the in fauna, what down. lives in the sediments. Right. Others are it's looking for what the sediment thing. is made of itself. It's she wanting to spin uh, back out? Yeah, just spin it back out. She doesn't have the beans in auto head. One of the uh -huh. things that That's gets preserved so in sediment are uh, otoliths. So the it's spinning that fast? Bones yep. of. Uh, a from the ears of fish. A lot of current oh. there. Something spin this around. Only, only well, that must be torquing, <coughs> torquing the cable, or it would find a happy spot and quit spinning. Some say the giant's plug still sticks out of the seafloor just a bit. <laughs> looks like some sort of artifact. <laughs> can you try and get me in view there so I can see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm trying to bring, you, bring it around now. <coughs> Don't leave us here. Redundant systems, redundancy systems is the exact verbiage. Um, yeah, yes and no. There's uh, you know, several cameras, several lights. Uh, there's several fibers, but um, only one is hooked up. So for the yeah, for the most part, no. We have to get it right the first time. Uh, we do have spares of pretty much everything on the, uh, you can push in a bit more there if you want. Lots of spares on board. This is, is that crinoid on, on the coral? Or right below it? Yeah, the crinoid is definitely hanging out on the coral. Um, and I'm looking at this particular spot right here, trying to see what the associate is. 
Gonna push in a bit more. Type of, um, some type of chrysogorgid. Just uh, push and in some more. There you go. And it's an anemone. So okay. that's an anemone, an extended anemone. We saw several closed earlier, um, but that's what they look like. It's a smaller one, looks like out. All right, we're good, thank you. Okay, it can go light. Cycle your auto heading. It's gonna be a little wonky with the uh, single thruster mm -hmm. there. Can you uh, come up a bit for me? Push in just a little, Daryl. Oh, Tina four. Um, or is it a jelly? Thinking sea cucumber. Oh, boo. Actually, he's really cool. Or it's, <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah, so this is one of the a little more. sea cucumbers it's that spends a lot more time on the water column. Is this, sea, is this a sea pig? It is. <gasps> Yep. So are those modified tube feet that are allowing it to kind of wave or I move? believe so, yep. So also it's a feed, it's swimming with its feeding appendages, so they'll actually land and use those things to um, gather sediment and put, put it in its digestive tract. It's ascending and descending intestines, yep. now that we know. <laughs> Really pretty shot here. It's mm. swimming. Yeah, it's wild. You can see that ladder nerve system. It's got quite some speed on them. Let him swim out of the frame there. Okay, completely lost the plot. Where are we going? I can go wide there. Thanks. I'll uh, come back ahead of you there, and can you can you come up a bit? Come up five meters. So for those of you who are just joining us, we're um, diving on an unnamed Gio, um, about 150 miles or so north of Kingman Reef, um, inside the U.S. exclusive economic zone around Kingman uh, Reef and Palmyra Atoll. Um, this is about 100 miles north of the Pacific Rhone Islands Marine What's National that? Monument. Uh, we're coming up the southeast flank. Um, sure corner of this feature. Um, we've got still good little ways in this dive. I'm having trouble doing math this late in my watch, but we won't be recovering until tomorrow morning uh, ship time, um, which hopefully will give us enough time to get all the way up to the summit. Um, weather's been a little, little, little bit of a trouble south, today. Yeah. We're right on kind of the line on I'll what we can be in the water the with and the angles at which we can move given the uh, um, the great geometry pro problem, of which is dynamic positioning, uh, which is the system the ship uses to hold us um, very, very steady and move us in through the water in whatever direction we need to with the ROV. Um, but you got to have, you know, all the forces lined up, um, kind of in the same way, having the the seas, the swell, the current, and the wind all coming, and you have to put the bow of the ship into that. Uh, which can limit our mobility side to side, which is what we're trying to do today, making the ship really work. But we seem to have found a happy heading and a happy direction of travel that's allowing us to still explore, even in kind of borderline conditions. Okay, I'm gonna have a place. 
think find so, something yeah. that's not a crinoid. <laughs> I feel like we got a little bit spoiled after last night's dive. Shark, Dumbo octopus egg case, mysterious orb. Oh, you saw a Dumbo? Possible oh, Dumbo octopus egg case. Oh. Or at least the remnants of. Remnants. On a coral. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We saved a picture of it in the highlights folder. Yeah, quick folder. zoom there, Daryl. Looks like we got one Chrysogorgia in the background. And probably a different genus of Chrysogorgia, or different species at least, in the foreground. I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. Eh, maybe bamboo. Mm -hmm. Uh, closer, or are you good? No, we're good. Right Not a hundred percent sure. I'm gonna lean towards bamboo, but we'll we'll take a frame grab and scrub on that one later. I think I did see some banding towards the bottom. Yeah. So the area we are exploring has uh, really never been explored. This group of seamounts north uh, of Kingman and Palmyra. Uh, and there's a very um, timely that we're here, given that the area is under consideration for a proposed National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, actually, there's public comment ongoing right now um, about the proposal to put a sanctuary out here. And the data we collect will be fed right into um, you know, the policy makers and decision makers who are considering um, that change will be definitely looking at the data we're collecting here uh, and hopefully helping to influence um, proper management of the area. So we have a question online, which is, there's some crevices here in the rocks. Is there any creatures that possibly live in those crevices? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a possibility. What is, the, what, is the, what is the term everyone's using? Anything's possible. I've seen some shrimp lurking about there, yeah, like hiding see, under the caverns. You'll see some of the decapods, <laughs> the shrimps and the crabs hanging out in there. Um, sometimes you'll see sea, uh, not sea cucumbers, but um, um, ophioroids, brittle stars hanging out in there. Um, shelter is, is definitely still a thing in the deep sea. Um, this has been fairly light on life. We had a good hour or so with a fair number of corals, but we really have seen very little mobile fauna here. Mm. Um, brittle stars, few sea cucumbers, one, maybe two fish, a couple swimming polychaetes. Um, but yeah, we have not seen a lot of mobile fauna down here. So while I definitely would expect to see things hanging out in the cracks and crevices, we just haven't seen a lot of life on this dive yet. We've had a, a moderately good diversity of corals and sponges, especially sponges. We've seen a, a fairly good range of sponges here, even if we've only seen one or two examples for each group. And then this is definitely we've seen great crinoid, stocked crinoid diversity. Multiple group, multiple types of comatula crinoid, multiple um, stocked crinoid um, families. Yeah, it'll be interesting to go back and look at the like location. There was that one like kind of group of much bigger corals we saw and how and where they were situated compared to all these sort of more sparser areas. It'll be interesting to see if that was like somewhere where there may be better flow or yeah, more ridge, nutrients. Or ridges something. and pinnacles really yeah. on these features seem to be kind of the best thing to look at is, is running the ridge back or finding the edge where it rounds off from the flanks to the top. These kind of just steeper slopes um, that are longer don't often don't have the same level of life that kind of the, the ridgebacks uh, have out here. And that changes in different areas, certainly. So 
So do we have a ridge in a coming up? Think well, about that gorgeous map that we were taking a look at earlier. We, that's kind of the hope, yeah, is that we're going to find our way on to kind of the ridge top of a rift arm on this feature. Yeah. And then we're expecting the biodiversity to increase. Closer to waypoint three. So yeah, a we're still a little ways. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm bold enough to say expecting, <laughs> but hoping. <laughs> cross your fingers, cross your toes. Can we check out this one, please? Yeah. Do you expect, Brian, the diversity to increase as you increase up the water depths? Yeah. So it, when you get super shallow, yes, absolutely. So a lot of times we think about the kind of there being a sweet spot between 18 or 16 and 2,400 meters for octocorals, and then another one in the 600 to like 1,200 range. Mm -hmm. Um, right. So we should be hopefully getting into kind of that, um, you know, they were starting to get in that zone as we just crossed 2,400 meters a little while ago. Why is that rock black? And the other ones are not. Can push in there now? That's a great question. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> a little cup coral. Oh, yeah, we got a little cup coral there, too. Uh, why was that rock black and the other ones were not? Um, I love it, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> am I, <laughs> am so I blind? Different. I thought they all were black. No, that one's like definitely different. <laughs> yeah, I would say this rock in the foreground definitely looks, has a different texture to it, at least in the rock in the background. I wonder if it could pick it up. It might be like, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to get rid of all that weight on the tray. Some type of price of And then add another tray. All right, science is happy with the corals. Roger, moving on. It, my unscientific okay, go away, observation, please. Corley, is that it seems to have like a less of that smaller bump oh. to it. Oh, wait, what was that fancy? Texture, the, whatever the texture. Wait, 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 hold on, I got it, this one. Bore, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> botryo botryoidal. Botryoidal. Ah, oh, so close. So it seems Sorry. less <laughs> botryoidal and more jagged melon rock, but of a come large up, variety. Come up size. just a bit. <laughs> the melon rock. <laughs> I'm right under you now. So, so Coralie, you've been the you've been the subject of an unofficial experiment on this thing. <laughs> Adam, how many times I could get you to say botryoidal uh, on this one? <laughs> We're at six. Woo. So for those playing along at home, that's your game for the for the shift. Add it to your bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many questions will come in? What's that bumpy texture? Yep. <laughs> What's that mean? Or right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we get when I get under you there, it's good to lift it up a bit. And then we'll get our tether in a knot again. So a lot of the sesofauna, the the deep sea corals and sponges and stuff that we kind of the ecosystem engineers that we're really interested in finding out here uh, and documenting. They really need hard ground. And so what we're seeing here is a lot of hard ground, but we're still not seeing a lot of um, corals or sponges here. So there's something else in the probably hydrodynamics um, of the area where the current flows that's controlling that they're not here, either food availability or larval dis distribution placement or something like that. It could even be the chemistry of these rocks for some reason is not as interesting to the larval stages. And so I they think don't um, It's pretty here. benign here. Um, we're getting relatively good at knowing where corals are not going to be um, because they need these hard grounds and they need rocks. So, you know, super sedimented areas, super flat areas uh, don't, aren't great hosts for corals. But we're really still a good little ways I away from that. being able to predict amongst the, the hard grounds and amongst the steeper <laughs> slopes uh, where we're going to find these corals. I say that and then we're going to jump off a cliff and go backwards. So a viewer online says that that rock that we saw that was dark of the melon variety uh, might have come from the slope above and then fallen down more recently. Definitely it's possible. Nice yeah. It's a possibility. Pretty little sand channel there. Yeah. Ooh. So is the currents, thinking about the currents and how that contributes to the biodiversity or biodensity. Um, 
So you need, you know, I know that you need at least a current, but is there like, two, is it possible to have too much current? I, mm -hmm. I think so, certainly. Um, we haven't seen this yet on this expedition, but one of the things that drives me nuts is filter feeders that live under overhangs or back in crevasses. Seems totally counterintuitive to me. Mm -hmm. And my guess is it's them getting out of current that is too fast and trying to get recessed in areas where there's a lee or an eddy in the water flow that slows down the particle velocity and makes it easier for them to actually catch the particles. Um, yeah, okay. So for ferromanganese cross formation, Please? one of the thing that, or things that aids ferromanganese cross formation is having bottom currents to wipe away sediments. Mm -hmm. um, but there, I read this paper that there is a sweet spot for a current. If it's too much current, then the rock oh, isn't going to be able to precipitate. But if it's too little current, then there's too much sediment on top. So. I'm guessing it's probably something yeah, similar. Probably, there's, it's probably a Goldilocks scenario where there's something that's just right. And I imagine that varies by taxa, too, yeah. of course. Uh, yeah, because, you come I mean, some of this biology, I feel like, would really just kind of blow away <laughs> if the current was too strong. Absolutely. There are certainly places that, that get so scoured that you're not going to see... Um, so after that lovely in-depth discussion, <laughs> to lighten it up, uh, we have a possible watch team name, which is <laughs> Coralie and the Benthic Bottery Idols. <laughs> push in there, Daryl. I love that. I, I want that on a shirt. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and heart that one. Okay. Looks like we got another bamboo here. I can uh, go away to get. Oh. So for those at home, uh, we're getting ready again for, for me. We're getting ready for a watch change. It's that time of the shift for <laughs> Coralie and the Benthic Bottery Idols to, <laughs> <laughs> to go catch up on some sleep. You can uh, come up a bit. Oh, I'm going to be underneath you here for the... And for those online, there is a Nautilus Live bingo card. If you go to the educational resource section, we have a midwater bingo and a benthic bingo. Although there's, we totally ask that you want to custom make Video your own change. bingo card, like botry idols, <laughs> crinoids. <laughs> Oh, somebody would buy that shirt. <laughs> so we're going to hang here for a couple minutes probably while m the control van changes over to the 8 to 12 watch. So Brian, we have a question. Sure. It's not as funny as Coralie and the Bottery Idols, but the question is, is a coral outcropping more present in a non-flat surface or she a flat stop, surface? Does she? But Generally, it? some kind of structure. Uh, uh, Ship all stopped, is it? Um, more on a promenade, more promontory, more on the top of something. Mm. No, I can let her move the 20. That's not, that's not always the case, but yeah, we're more likely to see them, a high density, Heard high it. abundance community kind of structured on some kind of elevation off the seafloor, a boulder or something like that often. <laughs> So 
So Coralie, are you from Central Valley, California? Um, no, I'm not. I am from Oakland, California, the Yay area. <laughs> <laughs> so the love from Central Cali, sweet. Yeah, we love California over here, or at least I do. I have not spent so much time in Central Valley, but I have driven through, through it quite a bit. Oh, hi. That's uh, Dan signing off. Watch change. See you, Dan. Our eight to 12 watch settling in. Test one, two. Hello. Okay. Loud and clear video. Mm hmm. That wasn't video. I'm video. But hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. Watch 8 to 12. Let's go. How's everybody feeling? Hopefully everyone's feeling good. Good, excited. A shout out to our viewers. Let's 
Yeah. And here I am. Well then, when uh, Robert's ready and when science is ready, we'll keep going. We're uh, heading to the northwest. About 290 is a good heading for, uh, for the ship and also for our waypoints. Sam, could you zoom out on the high pack real quick? I sure can. Okay. How far do you want to go? Uh, what's that distance to, up to waypoint three? To waypoint three from where we currently are. We're, oops, let me not drop a target there. We're looking at uh, about 960 meters. Okay. Ooh, it's going to get steep. All right. Yep. It is. So would you like to continue? Yep, let's keep moving. Great. Robert, are you ready to continue? That's a big thumbs up. Bridge, Nav. Good evening, Bridge. Five zero meters, bearing 290, please. Two nine zero bearing. Hmm. That's no good. Correct, thanks. So science, what are we looking for this dive? Uh, so we're just going to keep our eyes out for the biology that we see, collect a rock every now and again, and if we do see dense aggregations of biology, we'll want to collect some of them eDNA Niskin bottles. I think there's been, it's been described as a low density, uh, medium diversity kind of transect so far. What's that yellow thing there off to the right? Well, that looks it's like, like a crinoid. Oh, there's a bunch of them right next stopped. to each other? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Apparently there's been quite a lot of crinoids mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. this dive. Uh, we don't care. Uh, sort of? No. Sort of care? I think we can keep going. Keep going. Hey, can you zoom in? What's the red? Oh, like a shrimp. shrimp. Is that a shrimp? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a bunch dead, of dead stock, probably a bamboo, some crinoids. Yeah. The shrimp look like it, it's on its side. Yeah. Oh. It's just Stretch. chilling there. <laughs> There was something kind of dark <laughs> in the background that yeah. I wanted to check out. Um, Zoom out? Yeah, I don't know if it's still there. Maybe it was the shrimp I was seeing, but it could also be holothurian or something. You see something you want to look at? Um, I don't see it anymore. Okay. We're good to keep going, I think. Yeah, there's a few of these dead, dead corals taken over by crinoids. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I think 
Metella Gorgeous Mates. Yep. Is that our, is that our watch name now? That um, is our watch name. <laughs> never going to shake it. It's never going to, yep. Um, yeah, so we don't have any specific biology objectives for this dive. Um, we're just going to continue to document what we see. Mm -hmm. And speaking of, can you zoom in on that coral, please? Bottom right coral. Yep. Jules, you're a little quiet. Oh. Uh, is this any better? Not much. Is your mic near your... Zoom in, Dave. Please. Hold on, Adam's gonna <laughs> help me. Uh, well, I don't know how to do anything back here. Dave, is the aux volume her, uh, your own volume? Is that a listen or a in or out? What's no. the main volume? Does that main that's... volume turns up everybody, and then you can individually. Oh, turn. Okay. Does that turn up me too? Uh, no, it does not. But okay. I can take care of that as soon as I'm. <laughs> Done, uh, looking Look at that beautiful crying. Crying. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's a that's really great beauty. Crying. Oh, is that dead coral tissue under it? That's Underneath it? Yeah, it looks Yeah, like it, it kind of looks like it's dead. Hmm. It's interesting. Like it squeezed it to death. <laughs> Coral, do we think this is another bamboo? Paula, thoughts on coral ID? Yeah, let's look at it. Okay. Yep. That's good. Thank you. Jules, would that be an unbranched bamboo coral? Uh, that'd be my best guess. Brian said they've been seeing a lot of those. Oh, nice. So earlier today, Adam, you guys um, had the chance to um, cut rock samples. How did that go? Oh my gosh, so much fun. Um, we cut open the samples because as you can see in the video, um, they're all encrusted with this iron manganese oxyhydroxide mm -hmm. crust. And so we don't necessarily know what we've got until we get to look inside. And so we cut, cut them all open and most of them uh, were, were uh, basalts or igneous rocks inside, which was great to see. Um, a few of them were, were unaltered or, or fresh, which, we, which was good. In some cases, the crust was actually pretty thin, you know, less than a centimeter. In other cases, it was um, up to about six centimeters, so. Can we zoom on that sponge, please? Okay. I'm trying to figure out if it's a stocked sponge or if that was a. I think it's a stocked oh. sponge, kind of laying down. Coral, yeah. It looks like there? a maybe ferrid, Faraday. Uh, looks like that say. part of it. Oh. Laid over. Interesting. It's a really tall sponge too. Maybe too tall. Flew too high. Okay, uh, that's good, thank you. Right. Zoom out? Yep, you can zoom out. Oh, and we have a question. What's the difference between unaltered and altered rocks or samples? Yeah, so, um, 
Let's see. So as the rock is exposed to seawater and heat, the um, minerals in the rock can can react, can lose some of its some chemicals to the water, get some added from the water, and change the composition from what it, what it was originally. Right. Uh, and so in order to take a look at what the volcano was like when it was active, we want, mm -hmm. we want samples that haven't been changed at all from that time. And so we, we kind of look, you can tell uh, fresh rock. Can you zoom in, Dave? Ooh, beautiful okay. Holothurian. Yeah. Uh, fresh rock is kind of a nice black gray color, mm -hmm. but it will tend to get lighter in color and you can actually see the replacement of certain minerals with with other minerals if you if you look Ooh, closely. Cool sponge. Really interesting shape here. Um, really familiar too, but I don't remember the name. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So we have a viewer. Um, they're wondering, have you found any crystal formations like a geode? Ah. Uh. Yeah, so for a, for a geode-like thing to form, you, you need kind of an open space right. that water's flowing through, and then the crystals grow off the wall towards the center of that open space. There's not a lot of open spaces down here, but there are little vesicles, little bubbles in the rocks, and they can fill with crystals, um, but they would be like a micro, micro geode. But definitely kind of a similar thing to a geode, but on just on a much smaller scale. Okay. Oh, Talofa from American Samoa. Our expected dive uh, duration is about 20 hours. We are at an unnamed gill on north northwest of Kingman Reef. Can we zoom in that? Yeah. Probably a bamboo. Can we get closer on that um, dead branch? Oh, yeah, what is I that orange I see thing? Some banding. That looks like a, a little anemone right. in there. I think a squat lobster over there, too. And then hydroids all over those branches. Ooh. Is that a oh, those used to be ferret, some sponges. Ferret right. Something? Fair something? I would say, yeah, probably Faraday. Faraday? Faraday? Cool. Thank you. If you have um, any more questions, uh, please send them in. Um, we have, how are, how are sea mounts formed? Please enlighten our, um, our friends online. Yeah, so sea mounts can form a bunch of different ways, but what's common to all of Sorry them? Sorry to interrupt, can we zoom on that please? Yeah. What's yeah, common to in, all the ways is that Okay, it's a Chrysogorgia. Chrysogorgia. Mm. Yeah, Chrysogorgia. Yeah. And sea cucumber. Uh, and a cup coral? And, and a cup, cup coral. coral. <laughs> Bingo. Jinx. Bingo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do we have a bingo card? We can, make our, we can make our own bingo we cards. We actually have on Nautilus Live in the education resources, we have some bingo cards for Let's us. Let's go. That sounds exciting. Zip along here. <coughs> yep. Thanks. Check out our nautiluslive.org for all those amazing resources, especially for our educators tuning in. 
All right, back to how C-mounts form. Mm -hmm. uh, if the listeners want to sign up for my Patreon, I have a whole series <laughs> on. I'm just, I'm just kidding. The thing that's... Is that okay? Not a sponsor. <laughs> the thing that's common to all C-mount formation is that some magma has found its way into the crust and uh, erupts. Now, right. most of the C-mounts that, that we see these may be some exceptions, are monogenetic, meaning that it was one big eruption that formed mm -hmm. them. It's like we're going and it's why you end up seeing, here. you know, kind of sea mounds as isolated little mounds, not uh, kind of glomming together in a big volcano. Um, these particular ones likely formed over a mantle plume, so a plume of hot material that could have started as deep as the core mantle boundary ascended up through the mantle and uh, began to melt when it got you know near near the there's something Earth's in the crust. upper right corner can we zoom on it please looks like Chris Gorgia and uh, there was something kind of gelatinous looking below it oh. are we in a good position to, to zoom I got a back down go down a slope Yeah, we're coming off a little null here. And okay. We'll yeah. come back up. And oh, will these seamounts ever reach the surface, or are they just? Yeah, that's another good question. That these seamounts did reach the surface. Mm, some okay. of them, the ones with the nice flat top to them. It. Right. Um, but they are now on a trajectory to get deeper and deeper as they move across the Pacific Ocean Basin because the crust that they're sitting on is cooling off and getting denser and sinking uh, further and further. Perhaps when they uh, get over all the way over to a subduction zone, they could... Uh, you know, kind of rise back up a little bit, but it's right. very unlikely that the, these will ever reach the surface. But they do wreak some havoc when they get to the subduction zone. So they, okay. they will try and slide down through this subduction zone and they can, uh, you know, cause some pretty big earthquakes because they, they're these big things sticking up trying to slide down back into the, into the mantle. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. One thing that's cool when eruptions happen mm. in the deep ocean like this is that the water is very good at cooling off the lava. And so as we're driving around here, we see um, what looks like kind of a lumpy seafloor. You can see some in the video right now. Right. And that is uh, pillow lavas, which form because the water is so quickly quenching the lava that as it flows it just can flow just a little bit before it's quenched enough that it it can't move any further and a new pillow breaks out from the old pillow so it kind of goes in little spurts and making these things that have a kind of pillow shape pillow lavas pillow lavas that's so interesting it is it's very interesting Oh, and we have another question about um, seamounts. What causes seamounts to have a flat top? Yeah, so the kind of natural form of a seamount perhaps is, is kind of um, a mound, maybe even coming to a point, mm -hmm. maybe with a little crater at the top. Um, but these ones it grew tall enough when they form to get all the way up to the sea surface and make a little island. But over time, uh, the waves eroded that island, flattened it, right. and Rider. that's why it looks like it has a flat top today. Awesome. Yeah, so we're kind of coming off this little knoll here, and then we'll come back up. Okay, great. Steeper slope up to a point three.
It'll be more of a gentle climb for the next slope and then it gets steep. It looks on the map like we'll be going right by the North good. Pacific Ocean, which is for some reason <laughs> labeled right there. Correct. <laughs> it kind of follows us around, so. <laughs> If you look out, do a lot uh, of downhill, if you look out the starboard side of the ROV, you'll see the yeah. North Pacific Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see if you look out the port side? Uh, some uh, unnamed. <laughs> <laughs> unnamed Kyo. This is not helping the misconception that there are not people in the ROV. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <that's> true. <laughs> we will not be looking out of the windows of the ROV. Out of out of the junction boxes. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? What is that dark thing? Is that just a shadow? Which dark Maybe which a, one? Nope. Illustrator. I think it's like a. This? Never mind. It's just a rock, like uh, chopped in half. We don't say just a rock. On <laughs> this it's one. never <laughs> just the rock. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Bridge now. Just to confirm, we're going Very upwards. Nice this slope. <laughs> Say what? We're going upwards. Uh, five zero meters, bearing two uh, nine zero. You see on that, we're kind of going across a little bit of a flat area, and then we'll go up the slope. Thank you. Of course, the you know what we see right here is can look really different than than this map because this map averages over you know fifty meters of C four, and so oh, if you wow. go like this, the resolution it changes. Well, there's a crino. I mean, there's just a crinoid. Oh, just a sponge. <laughs> Can you zoom on that sponge? I think it's Walteria. Just Walteria? Just Walteria. <laughs> no, it's you, Plectalin. Oh, is that the one that you said the Venus? Uh, Venus flower basket? Yep. Yeah. Venus flower basket. That's the one. They're really pretty. They Named are. for its basket qualities. It looks like it's woven. All right. right. That's good. Thank you. So, there's sponges in the ocean. <laughs> are there any s freshwater sponges? Or land it's sponges? Good, right. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say <laughs> no. That's a very good question. <laughs> I'm going to say no to land sponge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> mix that one. Uh, freshwater sponge sounds fake, but <laughs> let me look. You never know. We're discovering new species. Oh, you know. Yeah. Freshwater sponge. <laughs> oh. oh, look at this. this I what did you find? was mistaken. There are freshwater there are? sponges. Wow. wow. I did not know this. Here's the flat part, Robert. Bob, if, <laughs> if you catch up, um, oh we might try some push cores here. Yeah. What? What? Push cores. <laughs> we can do that. We can even stop the ship if you want. Well, how far? The, I, I think we got a fair bit of this ahead of us. So. Sure do. Well, let's wow. watch this. Well, how, how big does this ship move? It's 40 meters, but we can stop whenever you'd like. Make are a little almost, sand castle. Are we almost through it? <laughs> no, we've got about 100 meters of this. No, no, I mean that move. Oh, no, we're 40 meters left of the move. Oh. Fun fact, Paula has never made a snowman before. I have not. I have made a sandman. Oh, you never made a snowman? What? No. And sand fights, right? What? Instead You're of right. snowball yeah. fights. <laughs> Sandball fights? Which that sounds, sounds horrible. <laughs> Sandball fights. Oh, that sounds... <laughs> mm. I have never seen snow, and <laughs> these little kids show, they have a lot of snow fights, so I wanted to have uh. that back home so oh, I'm sure you'd love it for about a minute and a half <laughs> <laughs> you like god it's cold I, w I wish it snowed where I'm from but have you seen snow yes I have okay. all right and you like it like I enough do. that you'd want to yeah. live near it I, okay. yeah, I, I love it where were you that you saw snow um in well in Rhode Island and at UH Hilo because okay. Mauna Kea does snow, so we would go and snowboard. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so fun. <laughs> With my friends, it was, it was a great time. Wow, that's awesome. About half the time I've been up Mauna Kea, I get lightheaded, and the other mm -hmm. half I haven't. Did you have any? No. No. Oh, I think I was just having too much 
I was just too focused on the snow that. Too hard. Had to get him off the ground. <laughs> Adam, what's this? Like dusting. Yeah. So th this is uh, basically sorting of material by the movement of the mm. sediment. Okay. So bigger pieces will tend to kind of like rise up to the top, and you can see stuff kind of in the lee. So. So the, get a bit of dirt here for a while. the faster the current, the bigger you can. Are we going to stop after this move here? And yeah, I'd like I to mean, try and get a push core. We have 100 meters left of this flat area, but there's nothing precious about this move. We can just stop whenever you'd like. Okay, this well, this wasn't like my special <laughs> move. <laughs> I I'm not sure it's going to work, but this might be the most sediment we see for a long time. So. Does that mean stop? Yeah. Roger. Bridge now. Hold position, please. What are push cores? Yeah, push core is basically a, a hollow polycarbonate tube that you push into the sediment. Mm -hmm. And um, lumpy here. sometimes the sediment stays in and sometimes it doesn't. So right. we're going to see. <laughs> but okay. people like scientists like to get them because some people yeah. study it's the more, more animals lumpy here than it was that live in the sediment and uh, other people want to look for things like fish teeth and things like that mm -hmm. I don't know this is too lumpy it's a you could see yeah that fur that area we were before is a little better you want to just see if you can uh, I don't know what, what we can do about we, it. We could poke it and then just carry it with if it's too hard, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, poke That's it. That's a good idea. Poke of science. <laughs> science poke. Makes for a cool background from the Atalanta video. It's like we've we're in a field of like shooting stars or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Megan was talking about like the animals that we don't see that are like around the boat and like behind mm -hmm. her in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. been taken yet? No. Nope. Nope. They're, they're all empty. Can you, take, can you push the box out a little bit? Do we have samples in there? Nope, they're all empty. No, the in the box, yeah, there's a few samples, but it's rocks. rocks. Uh, Any biology that floats out? If you just push out to... There's a chrysogorgia. Yeah, there's a coral in there, but if oh. you right. keep the back row covered, you should be okay. Can you try and center up that Argus view so I can see the arm? That's you, TJ. Adam, just to learn, were you seeing, we're preparing a bio box just in case the push force cannot it. hold no, it? No, he didn't want to open it if stuff was going to float up out of it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> yep. The 
that's it. I don't think I've ever actually seen this live before. Me too. Can you uh, zoom in on that, Dave? There's a will or the way. <laughs> <laughs> now getting it back out. Everything in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, the more you jam in, the better chance you got of getting it out. Yeah. Sure. It is rough to have to swing it all the way around to the starboard side, though. Let's go. Ooh, oh, oh. <sighs> quick, quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ah, I uh. can't see. Can you pan down so I can see? Not me, you. <laughs> <laughs> I use the overhead view on Argus to see what I'm doing. Oh, 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 oh. dang it's it. Okay. It's okay. That was bad. Oh. I lost my grip. It's in there. That would be the forward push cord? Yeah, ah. the forward one. Awesome. Thank you. Woo! Almost. Don't know if it's a good time for a joke, but here's one from a viewer. Why should the ROV pilots be called salt and pepper during these samples? Because they push it real good. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Oh my gosh, how did I contribute to the chat when I'm sitting right here? <laughs> no, you can't take so for can't that. Take credit for this one out of <laughs> nice, my kindred spirit. <laughs> and then torquing the core sample. This voyage is bumping. Uh, wait, <laughs> we need to see what we're doing here. <clears throat> Is that your sister, Annie? No. <laughs> <laughs> can you see the cores up Where's there? Dave, can you zoom in some on the Argus hand. view? And then tilt down. And then hold the ship steady. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that one. <laughs> no. We can move it on top of you, but... I was actually hoping the same earlier when I was feeling seasick. If we could just stop for a uh, second. Can you see the cores there at all? Uh, uh, oh. they sh yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I think they're in the shadow. They oh. should be to the, you know, in that Ar Argus view down be below the vehicle, right? So if I, if I come forward a little bit? I think you have to rotate around to the right. Oh, I don't want to oh, run right. over them, so that's the thing. Oh, are we trying my method? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I do what I'm told. Oh, God. I didn't. Oh, let's see. I don't know how well it's going to work because I can't see what I'm doing, but... 
There they are, Robert, over. Yeah, these. right side. On the, just on your starboard side. Where? I can't tell you you're pointing. Just uh, go forward a touch. Oh, I think I maybe see them. You see him? I don't want to run over him, so. Uh, I thought I did. Can you turn to your right? Is that where you saw him, TJ? Yeah, I seen him there on the right. Uh, they were just lateral on the starboard, looking for him here on the <coughs> screen. See him there? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but right I can't there. see where I am. Yeah, yeah. So they're on your starboard, uh, starboard quarter. No. Oh, they're there. Now you're lower right on the uh, hurt cam. Yeah, I don't want to be there. I want it to be on the side. Oh. All right, I'm like way too far over though. You want to just do it standard, standard mode? <clears throat> well, if we can. Get it in the Argus view. There is a bit of current blowing me around here. Uh, now I'm just gonna set up regular. Yeah, I, I, think I don't like this. Yeah. All right, they're going over to your port quarter now. If uh, you've gone past them. Does port quarter refer to the front quarter or the back oh, quarter? Uh, port, for, uh, port quarter, port forward quarter. Port forward quarter. Annie, where do we have people tuning in from? Great question. We have, of course, mm. the United right, States. I'm getting yanked, though. Australia, Canada. Woohoo! Yeah, I, yeah, uh, I can't okay. do it. Netherlands. Bridge now. Can't work like that. France, Germany, Portugal, New Zealand, Japan, Indonesia. Wow. Two zero meters, two nine zero, please. Nice. Finland and Switzerland. All right, New Thanks. Zealand, make yourself known. Thanks for tuning in, guys. <laughs> I can go a bit lower, but with the, with the well, heat. Well, no, we're yeah. already 10 meters. Like, yeah. Thank you, everyone. We can take our time to set up here. We'll get to your questions real, uh, real soon. making any lateral moves here. <clears throat> I gotta turn. You're not able to lateral because of the current? Yeah. Wow, okay. You can see it. Yeah, yeah. I guess we're in a little notch here. Makes sense, there's some current. Do you want me to bring up that screen that Dan set up? Has that any helped you? <clears throat> Did Dan set up? Oh, yeah. That well, actually, though, I'll be switching to sample mode and it, and it goes away. So All right. It would be good if it didn't go away when he went to sample, for yeah. sure. Hold on, I can set it up here for you. Yeah, but I'm going to kill it. As soon nope. as oh, on you, here. You can put it on there? Yeah, yeah, I'll try. I don't need a silly sonar. Science, what was the, f or uh, Data, what was the first uh, push core yeah, uh, the ID first number? It would be 017, and Z it's the one with the red band cap. 
Perfect, thanks. I have, it. I have it on my screen here, if that's any. Okay. But RGSU is really my preferred overhead. If it wasn't bouncing around so much. All right. Can you zoom in a touch there, Dave? That's good. Be okay. Yep. That's like a sixty percent. So. Yeah. But wait till we get it in before you break anything down. Want to change the sample? Yeah. In the hole? I believe it is. Nice. Adam, just to confirm, they, I thought it was going here, but it's here. The it's zero there, yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Can you put me back and dive? Come back to dive. And sorry to be a pest, but can you uh, get Argus on there again? The Argus view, can you get that in? I'm trying to come around there now. That ship move is completed. But let me know if you're still getting yanked. full beans here, I can't come anywhere. Is there, you can't see it? I know where you are, I just can't get around you. I'm just getting swung around here. And a zero to a little trust around again. Uh, 
Another so step. what happened there? We were we had finished the move, but we can do another step. It, the wind's picking up, so I think the ship's just struggling. You want to do another step? Well, I, I can't do it if we're <laughs> not going to sit still. Yeah. <laughs> Bridge nav. It's two, uh, two zero meters bearing three zero zero. We don't lose this tube core. Thank you. What's the wind doing anyway? Gusting. Uh, we're between 21 and 22, but it hasn't been steady yet. It's been usually under 20. And the gusts? Or it's been under 20 consistently with gusts to 22. Oh. But if it keeps picking up, that we're seems yeah, we're going to have to call it. Not significant? Well, no, but... We're getting some pretty pretty big heaves coming in. Yeah. We're maxing out there about 13,000 pounds. In the Roger. All right. And we... Uh, yeah, the and currents... <laughs> Well, we can't leave that this thruster controller on Argus on because it's grounded out. It's going to burn it up. We're stepping up 20 meters. I can come up a touch and uh, see if can I get you from a bit of height, but that shortens your... <clears throat> well, yeah, but you're already yanking on me, so yeah. if you come up, you're just going to yank on me more. Right, try and give you two or three meters. Come down. That's me nine meters off bottom. Okay, we're about halfway, almost halfway through that move. It's not moving? No, no, we're moving. Just started it. We've got 15 meters left, uh, but the wind's dropping again, so hopefully it will hold long enough for us to grab this and get on our way. We decide. If you look at look at my stern camera, you know, I'm I'm just yanking yeah. you with the ship. So the other problem is I can't we can't, we can't really move the ship more than more north than 300 right now because of the forces. Hence the crabbing over. But let's see what happens when we get. Uh, which way are you going? There? We're going. 300, we're going following Argus. Why are you following Argus? Because he wanted to get it closer so I there's less yank. Argus closer to me. Not me closer to Argus. Uh, okay. Well, it that's a problem right there. Bridge, <laughs> Nev. Can we step uh, two zero meters bearing 
One, two, zero. One, two, zero, please. I think we need to throw a target here. Uh, one, two, zero, please. I have targets. One, two, zero, please, bridge. I'm not sure. Uh, is that what you were doing? Yeah. I've got a target here. Okay. So you can always bring that back in. I can't see that target. See True. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have error. It's starting to get a bit of slack in the in the tether there now. Just we don't want to lose track of this Can't put wraps in if I'm making on you like that anyway. So is this the delta depth compared to to Hercules? Yes, yeah. Yeah, the difference between Argus and Hercules. We're awesome. <laughs> If this wind keeps gusting though over 22, we're gonna have to do some reevaluation though. Yeah. We're also having this issue with Atalanta spinning. Is he only one thruster right now? Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, because it's grounded. Not like great. You can't. You can't run with it grounded like that. Yeah. We've already experienced. In fact, it was probably that same motor that flooded, right? It's the same one, yeah. Yeah. So that, I think that thruster has an issue. Yeah. So we need to just swap it out. Yeah. You need to get comp on those things. You can't have it comped. No, it just bleeds out.
What's our tether length right now? Sorry? What's the tether length right now? 30? 30. 30, yeah. Pulled out there. Looks like me walking my dog, getting, <laughs> getting pulled along. What kind of dog do you have? A uh, golden doodle, who's essentially as old as the the OECI. Started with <laughs> on <laughs> the million Zoom calls on for OECI. <laughs> she was a puppy, and now she's. Two years old or whatever. Oh. What's her name? Kona. Kona. Oh. Oh. Well, look at the cucumber. <laughs> Super. I'm just chilling. For our um, for our viewers, can we get a brief summary about what's happening? Sure. Uh, let's see. So we're okay. We're down here in this little uh, kind of depression, oh, and better. it's collected a lot of sediment. So we decided to take some sediment cores, and uh, really successful uh, sediment cores, which is exciting, and. Uh, now we're just getting the ship and Atalanta and Hercules kind of positioned Remember? so that yeah. they can all you work are effectively. And we're fighting a little bit of weather Somewhere to right do right that. In there, right? Should be d straight ahead of you. Yeah. Can't get there yet. No. Okay, well, let's do another little. Uh, Bridge nav. Uh, two zero meters, one one zero, please. So, folks viewing at home kind of see the image from Atalanta going up and down and the image from Hercules nice and steady and that's because Atalanta kind of takes up the heave of the ship. It's connected by right. the mm -hmm. cable to the ship. As the ship goes up and down, it kind of goes up and down and then there's a tether between them. So uh, Hercules is isolated from the ship motion uh, for the most part by Atalanta. Which is so close to Atlanta, and I'm afraid I'm going to say that every time. <laughs> How do you, you pronounce know, it? Atalanta. Atalanta. Because the target layer is not. Atalanta. I think so. Okay. Atalanta. Okay. Did you think it was Atlanta this whole time? No, well. Maybe. <laughs> That's what you've been saying. Well, <laughs> isn't that what you've been saying? Yeah. I've been trying not to say Atlanta, and I've Atlanta. been saying Atalanta. 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 You have a bit more slack there. Oh, you? I. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, no, I, I know it's Atalanta. Okay. Okay. I do too. I just some. If I say it fast, sometimes right. I'm worried I'm going to say Atlanta. I kind of just say Atlanta <laughs> with an at. Yeah. That's how I think of it. I was saying it wrong too, like the Atlantic. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Atlanta. Atlanta. Now I'm now I'm really thinking about it a lot. I see it. What's the difference between Atlanta mm -hmm. and Argus? Uh, some weight. Some Argus is bigger. They serve the same kind of function. Uh, Atlanta is a little lighter. Mm -hmm. Which is nice when you're uh, when you're going really deep or you have a lot of weather because it, it puts less mm -hmm. tension on the, the wire. Positions oh. bouncing all. I know the that's the other thing I'm trying to figure out right now. Gotcha. Might want to do a um, a reset. Okay. Yeah, this is not not Hercules. Um, let's see.
So Jules, when did you become interested in marine science? Um, so I guess going into college, I knew that I wanted to study environmental science. Mm -hmm. um, that I've kind of just always known, but I had this job, I think it was summer of my junior year. I worked at Duxbury Beach Reservation um, and my job was to watch piping plover broods. Oh. Yeah, very sweet, very cute. Um, and I learned a lot about conservation and about seabirds. And I was talking to my advisor, um, trying to figure out what classes I was gonna take in the fall. And I was signing up for classes late. It's very last minute. And she was like, hey, you should sign up for the marine program. And so I sent in my application late. And yeah, that fall I, I was in the BU Marine Program. Bump. Bump. <laughs> um, so do you know uh, Wally? Full I do know Wally, yeah. She's the greatest. Hand. She's wonderful. She's super cool. I took her biogeochemistry class. Yeah, uh, no, it was amazing. We got to do a lot of field work. Um, we were out in Stellwagen Bank, the marine sanctuary, um, looking at coral reefs on computer screens. That's how I got into deep sea ecology in the Rochin lab at BU. That's where I met Brian Kennedy. And those, uh, those are interesting corals out there because they're deep water yeah. corals, but they're kind of shallow because the water's cold. Like they're yeah. cold water corals, basically, right? Which so corals? They, they in Stellwagen Bank. Oh, I, I wasn't looking at corals in Stellwagen. Actually, I'm not sure if they're too low. there are corals in Stellwagen. There are. There, there are? Yeah, they're, oh. they're uh, deep water corals, but, but they're a bit shallower because the water's real maybe. cold. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I would, that was uh, Les Kaufman's class. So I was looking at seabirds in that class. Ooh. Coral stuff was separate. But coral are my, my real love. Seabirds are cool. Rocks are fine, but. Mm, fine. No, well, they're that okay. sounds aggressive. They're rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the one of the main corals that the Rochin lab works with are Estrangia poculata, and they collect them off the coast of Rhode Island. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. How do they get them? Diving or with? Diving, uh -huh. yeah. They're shallow water corals. Do we think we're going to be able to recover there? Awesome. Cool. <laughs> Knock on wood. Okay. I think that might have been part of our problem too. The Hercules wheel was all over the place. Okay. Are we happy? I'm going to take you back off mute. Kill Nav G. Okay. Do you just do marine marine science, geo science, or do you also do like terrestrial stuff? I do terrestrial stuff too. Okay. Um, Dave, can yeah, we get the a couple of years ago? I was down in screen, Galapagos, uh, where I've done some marine yeah. science, but well, also to look at eruptions of. Uh, Sierra Negra volcano, mm. and I love the Galapagos Islands. Super cool. That one better. In fact, my favorite breakfast of all time is at a little cafe in Galapagos. Can you, can you get, uh, <laughs> wow. They have something called bolon, 
which is plantains and cheese in like a softball size ball that I think oh, is from wow. a or something. Yeah, I don't think and then can. that. No, if I swing, I'm going to rice up and, and pull beef you. stew and two yeah. eggs. Oh my god. Yeah, you don't, you really don't have to eat for like the whole rest of the day. <laughs> the bolón completo. Mm. <laughs> that sounds so good. It's really good. We do have some pretty good food on board. I've been having like pineapple with every meal. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I'm going to put your microphone to your face. Okay, try it again. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a little zoom there, Dave. And which do you prefer, marine or terrestrial? Hmm. You tell me when to swap over to sample. Uh, I guess marine, but I love terrestrial. I don't know. Don't make me choose. Pretty <laughs> sticky. <laughs> we are on a boat. Stay in there. What's going Let's on? Let's go. Here? Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, that was great. That core is bussing. You did not just say that. <laughs> I totally did. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> One of your kids teach you that? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Dang it. Dad's got a little drip. No. Did I do that? That one, that one didn't sound right coming off the egg. That one felt... So, felt yeah. weird? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did it fall out? No. What else Can do you, you know? Me what to other sample mode? Their pop culture. Well, there was something about some Riz. Oh, having oh some yeah. Riz. I've yeah. heard yeah. about Riz. We okay. lost it. Yeah, that's a thing. Go back to dive mode. You want for a second? You want for the sample again? I'll just try and use it up there. It's a lot easier when you can see what you're doing. No cap. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> Go back to dive. Yeah. See, even even thousands of miles from home, I can still embarrass my children. <laughs> <laughs> Are they watching right now? God, I hope not. It's pretty late there. How old are your kids? Uh, eleven and fourteen. Okay. Davy and Elise. Oh wow. Do they watch these back? Uh, no, probably not. I mean, <laughs> I might, maybe we'll do an interaction with their school. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Davy, really? Let me know when that is. Davy. Davey. Yep. Davy. One day he'll be a Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Dave. Or a David. <laughs> yes, and David is when Dave, he's in yeah. trouble. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. I know that one. Not really a nickname for Adam, is there? Uh, ooh. uh, well, my sister called me A, the letter A. a. Yeah. Okay. And back in the day, I was called Sunny Jim, which is there was a peanut butter in the Northwest. Okay. And that little Sunny Jim kid on the front was a little redhead <laughs> kid like me. Sunny Jim. You do have a sunny gym look, you really do. <laughs> do you know that peanut butter? I grew up in Seattle, my friend. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know sunny gym. Sunny gym. Let me switch the sample. Switch on something, I think it's falling out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever you get in there, we'll take it. Can't see. <laughs> I don't think there's much. It's okay, we'll take it.
Let's go. Okay. Awesome. I'm gonna bump that sample tree in. It's almost all the way in already. Yeah. Which is kind of good. You couldn't do that with the old Herc. It bumped the the uh, foam bumper on that side. Oh, if it was in and you tried to reach over? Yeah. It, the arm had hit that rubber bit. Oh, uh, yeah. So we good? We're good. Back to dive. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's go. Well, this is a question for our pilots. Um, how does the team deal with? How do you how do you guys deal with uh, mechanical issues like thrusters not working, or mechanical armature not functioning properly? At what point does it take for a Herc to be brought back into port for repairs? Let's uh, you, uh, hold off on that one for now. Okay. <laughs> Sounds Can good. you uh, get that view up there again? The Yep, front porch view. One thing to add to that is there's lots and lots of spares out here. Mm. So if things go wrong, there's all the equipment out here to, to yeah. fix it. We don't always have a spare for stuff, though, and you got to get innovative and creative. Yeah, mm -hmm. make your own. It's true that we just got a 3D printer aboard, and that's uh, oh, wow. been pretty handy. Mm -hmm. It's coming up off bottom. Yeah, I was on a cruise where we had a, a gravity core, which is kind of like these push cores, but you drop it from the ship, and it's got a big weight on top, and we. We lost it, and uh, ship's crew welded together a bunch of metal parts, and we had a new one. That was wow. pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, we have a bunch of just oddball pieces of aluminum and plastic and stuff. That I've always wondered why the spare wood is called dunnage. Is that right? Is that what that yeah. means? Why is that? Dunnage? Well, dunnage. Dunnage is dunnage. what you use for like uh, to secure things or put loads on. Oh. It's just, yeah, it's just junk wood that you use for, to help strap things down. And I guess it's, when it's shipboard, it's called dunnage, I think. Maybe it's, dunnage. maybe it's in a warehouse or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, when I worked in a warehouse, it was always called dunnage. Yeah, but that might be left over from yeah. shipboard. Yeah, um, I don't know which one. Came sounds first. like a Google thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> Isn't there like, I don't know, does everyone else feel the compulsion to like save bits of wood? I have this whole corner of like, <laughs> yeah, know, odd, Where are you odd getting legs, spare wood. Food. Well, you know, you build something and then you've oh, got well, the, like a, you know, a bit of plywood and some some two by fours. <laughs> yeah. And, Oh, you should okay, see my so we're heading back uh, <laughs> 290 again? Yeah, if we're, if we're ready to do that, we can um, head that way. I yeah. think I've got you a scale back, but I'm a little concerned. Um, okay. Uh, science, we get to keep moving? Yep. yep. Great. Bridge, Nav. Sue, so 50 meters, bearing 290, please. So I have an answer about dunnage. It is inexpensive or waste material used to load and secure cargo during transportation. Five zero meters. So there you go. Zero. So yeah. So wow. it's probably appropriate in a warehouse and on trucks and stuff. So that was like yeah. word for word what Robert said. Our a living Google. <laughs> <laughs> I do look at the Merriam Webster <laughs> word of the day every day. <laughs> What was it today? 
Oh, God. <laughs> it wasn't very hard. It was an easy word today. So what is the maximum possible depth the ROVs um, can dive? Was it like 6,000 meters? 6,000? No, this one's 4,500, one? yep. Oh, okay. uh, it's four, I think it's 4,000 for Herc. 4,000, yeah. yeah. 6,000 for uh, Atalanta. Right now we're at about 2,500. Mm -hmm. That's also depends on what s sort of gear is on board because like the Brahmin spectrometer can't go deep. Right. Yeah, right. Back. Was it 1,500 for Fif that? Yeah, 1,500. Yeah. yeah, so there are, there are parts of the ROV that could go deeper that aren't really pressure sensitive, mm -hmm. but uh, whatever the part is that is the most pressure intolerant, that's the depth you can go to. Oh. Yeah. The Merriam-Webster word of the day today oh. is <laughs> telegenic. Telegente? Telegenic. Telegenic. As in, as in, you are very telegenic when you were on. Van, oh, yeah, that's right. Van oh, Cam, Van yeah, Camera, I should have known that. Van Camera <laughs> One. Yeah, it wasn't hard. That was oh, the word. Telegenic. Yeah, telegenic. Is now shooting a picture of you all. And, and that word are, of the day. You are all very <laughs> telegenic today. Isn't the that's, isn't the word photogenic? Is this like? Oh, if you're no, this is you're good on video. television. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Tele, however pertaining to television. All right, who knows the New York Times word of the day? Oh, Ooh, I don't know. What is it? I do get the New York Times, but I don't look at the word of the day. It is. Wait, it doesn't have one for today. <laughs> <laughs> it has one that for yesterday. That was a trick question. <laughs> what was yesterday? Yesterday it was predicament. Predicament. Uh, oh. Man. I think they, they usually have, like, relevant in the news, right? Like what people are talking about. Right. Okay. So yeah. it's predicament every day. Every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> ten years. <laughs> Been the same word for ten years. Okay. See you again, Robert. Where's all this? Where's all this stuff coming from here? Did I do that? Right. Yeah. There's a, a little floater, oh. a crinoid. That's a uh, Umbalula, actually. Umbalula. Here's a good example of what, what was going on with USBL. This is. Yeah.